This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to answer the question, are we living inside of a software simulation? Are we living inside of a simulation or something like a video game? If you're interested in learning how to make money in both bull and bear markets, or just want to see what I'm investing in or trading, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So this video is offered in the spirit of uh, a previous video where I talk about how to use crazy people to get rich. And you guys asked for more videos like this. If you don't know what this is talking about, I would encourage you to go watch this previous video first, which I've linked to below. Now, if there's anything that's led a lot more people to believe we might be living in a simulation, and what I will say is that I'm not going to let you know my opinion. This is just one of those crazy ideas that I've heard from a lot of smart people. I'm not going to let you know where I come down on the on this issue so you can make up your own decision. But here's kind of a uh, tongue-in-cheek calendar for 2020. It's obviously been a very strange year. It's been a tragic year for many people. Australian fires in January, locusts in Africa, coronavirus, protests, and then jokingly going forward, solar flares, Yellowstone eruption, basically all the, the disasters that mankind has ever uh Envision being ending with an asteroid strike. So this is this is sort of an example of weirdness. But let's talk about what it would mean to live in a software a software simulation. I think maybe I heard this first from Elon Musk uh, from reading his Twitter. Though a lot of people in Silicon Valley uh, have been talking about this for many years. So Musk, I'll link to this article. Uh, I believe it's a Vice article. Says that there's one in a billion chance that the reality that you and I see when we're living is not a simulation, is not a software simulation. So he certainly thinks we're living in a simulation. And the arguments go somewhat like this. When a civ civilization gets advanced enough, it starts to create software. And using software, when it reaches a certain stages, when you have semiconductors that are powerful enough and Moore's law kicks in, you can start to create virtual worlds, very realistic virtual wor worlds using software. These have been around for maybe 20 years and they're now getting quite good, at least in, in our reality. Now, once you have one virtual world, the inhabitants of that virtual world can start to create their own virtual worlds within the first virtual world using software as well. Obviously, obviously it's all digital. This process could take place much more quickly in uh, for the second virtual world than it did for the first, because the first virtual world was dependent on the real world, learning how to mine, how to create semiconductors and computers and software, etc. But once you get in this nest of virtual worlds and you're not bound by real world constraints, you could very quickly generate billions of virtual worlds, all of them nested within each other, sort of like those Matryoshka Russian dolls. Now, if we step back and look at the probabilities, if there, let's say there are a billion virtual worlds and there's one real world, if that's true, and I'm not saying it is true, you're going to have to decide for yourselves, but if it is true, what is the probability that we're living in that one original real world? Well, it's a very low probability. It's roughly one in a billion, which may be, um, I'm sort of fixing these numbers to, to match Elon's argument. So this would su suggest that if this sort of process can happen, it's a very low probability that we're living in that original physical world, that it's much more likely likely we're inside of one of those video games that are nested within one another, inside of one of those simulations. Now there's other evidence for this that people have put forth. If you were creating a virtual world, what would be some of the constraints that you would create for the inhabitants of that virtual world? And these are sort of built into the software, but you would also, uh, basically you would not want inhabitants of your virtual world to travel to be able to travel to the edge of the simulation and see people talk about sailing to the end of the world and seeing a giant waterfall or seeing a, 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 glass, uh, a glass sphere or some, something like that. But basically you can't let them travel to the edge of the simulation and maybe peek out your computer screen or whatever the, the equivalent would be. And so you gotta keep them somewhat in the middle of the virtual world. And we find out that in our experience of the solar system and the universe, that this is what our, our universe looks like. We are constrained by the speed of light. Uh, as human beings, we can go uh, nowhere near the speed of light, obviously, at least not yet. But theoretically, if we could ever go to the speed of light, we'd still be constrained. And we have this constantly expanding universe such that even if we could go the speed of light, it looks uh, impossible to be able to get to the edge of the universe or the edge of the simulation. So this is what we would expect if we were living inside of a virtual world. 
The other thing, if you were creating a virtual world, you would not want to let your inhabitants see what things are made out of. If they could dig down deep enough and see the zeros and ones, see the bits and bytes, or if they, if everything began to look like blocks, like it does in Minecraft, they might think they're, it might just be a little too obvious that they're living inside of a video game. And when my kids play Minecraft, they know that obviously this is a, a very simplistic version of the real world. It's obviously gotten a lot more advanced, but when you see these blocks and that you can shoot out uh, or, or build with, you, it's, it's, it doesn't look like the real world. And so if you're creating a virtual world, you would not want to let your inhabitants dig down too deep and look at the actual stuff that's, that the, that the uh, virtual world or universe is made out of. And this is what we find in our world as well. We find that as we go at the subatomic level and as we go at the sub-electron level and go to look at these smaller and smaller things, that this quantum weirdness takes over and sort of the common sense laws of physics are violated. And uh, this would be another sign that we could possibly be living in a simulation because we can't go to travel to the edge of the simulation and we can't dig down and see what the simulation is made out of. So this leads to my final point that if you are living inside of a video game, if you're living inside of a simulation, it's at least theoretically possible that there are cheat codes. And for those of you who don't play video games, I wouldn't know this if it weren't for my kids, but a cheat code is just something that gives you superpowers within the video game or allows you to bypass uh, the normal rules. So maybe you'd be able to fly when everyone else has to walk or something like that, or you could teleport, or you could have unlimited money to spend in the virtual world, etc. And so this suggests that if we are living inside of a video game or simulation, there might be cheat codes that can be available. And we've all known people who seem to just have it all figured out and everything goes right for them. And they're smart and they're good looking and they're rich and they're nice, etc. And uh, so some people have suggested that possibly these people could have access to cheat codes. There's uh, the way Steve Jobs used to talk. He's a great example of someone who used to talk about how you could you could bend reality to your will. He obviously did a lot of LSD, uh, was a very creative, crazy type. Um, but some people have suggested that people like Elon Musk and people like Steve Jobs have somehow accessed cheat codes for this simulation. So when I sit back and try to figure out, uh, have, has there been anything that looks like a cheat code to me, at least recently in the last couple of years? And again, I'm not telling you whether I believe in the simulation, but if I did believe in the simulation, uh, what sort of thing might appear to me to be like a cheat code. And the one that immediately comes to mind, it won't surprise my regular listeners, is Bitcoin. Here's this very strange thing that uh, almost looks like it was planted on Earth by an alien power. It's um, just a very, very beautiful software construction. And it seems to be a way, especially if plan B is right, and it's going to $100,000 of Bitcoin or a million or 10 million of Bitcoin, as it appears to be doing. This might be uh, one of those rare glimpses into the code of this virtual world. And this might be a cheat code that's available to everyone. And as you would expect a cheat code, if you're living inside of the virtual world, inside of the simulation, these cheat codes will look crazy. They'll look too good to be true. And they'll be very difficult to distinguish between uh, a cheat code and something that's just being offered by a scammer or a, uh, a con man. And so uh, I would suggest I think Bitcoin is an amazing investment. I'm uh, uh, not trying to pump it or anything, not that I could even pump it if I wanted to, it's a very big market. But I think that if you believe that the, the universe is a simulation, what we're living in is a video game, that the easiest, most accessible cheat code that's available right now is an investment in Bitcoin, which could go up anywhere from 10 to 100 to 500 times and so make anyone who can invest even just 500 or or $1,000 very wealthy indeed. That's uh, the video for today. Can you hit the subscribe and like button if you found this helpful and, uh, and weird? And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear critiques of this argument and also whether you think we're living in a simulation or not. Thanks a lot for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.